Hello everyone, Katarina here. Welcome to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I have for you a fun project. I saw this one on Instagram so many times and I wanted to try it out. And I thought this would be perfect for my Christmas cards. Although you can give this for other occasions as well. For example, I made few birthday cards. I don't know what this technique is called. It's loose watercolor tree line. It's a mixture between wet on dry and wet on wet technique. This is nothing complicated. So if you are a beginner, this is definitely for you. So let's get started. Let's get quickly through the supplies. I have here my watercolors. I'm using the Gonsai Tambi palette from Koretake. I really like this palette. Not only the pants are big compared to the traditional half pants, but also there are so many shades, which is great because I'm not good at mixing colors. But you don't need to have this exact palette. Whatever you have at home will do. Then I have here a few brushes in different sizes. I will only use one type, but I first needed to test which one feels the best. On the side, I have a paper towel to clean my brushes and also to soak up excess water. I have two jars with water and a block of watercolor cardstock. Before I start with the painting, let me show you my practice pieces. This piece with the four rows of the green trees, this was one of my first practice pieces and I think it looks good. Just practice until you are comfortable with the strokes, the size of the brush and the look of the tree and you should be okay. Talking about the size of the brush, before I started this video, I took few leftovers of the watercolor cardstock and I tried out a few different brushes in different sizes. So if you are having problems with painting, especially if it feels uncomfortable, it might be you are using a brush in the wrong size. Anyways, I will show you two versions of painting the trees. The first one is based on the one I saw on Instagram. Well, sort of. I still need a little bit of practice. First, I painted the trunk of the tree, just a straight line, and then I painted the lines on each side, really sparingly, not making it too bushy. The first example I messed up completely, and the other ones are not exactly like those I saw others painting. However, the trees in these examples are bigger, and I found it a little bit difficult to handle the brush. Smaller trees are way easier to do, which I'm going to do here on the actual painting. I picked five different shades of blue, but you don't need so many shades. The first step is to apply clean water. This is where the bottom of the trees will be. I'm using here bigger brush to apply the clean water and I was generous with it, but not to the point that is pooling. If that happens, just use a paper towel to soak it up. And then I started painting the trees, just as I showed you in the example, starting with the middle line or the trunk. And then I painted zigzag strokes going from side to side. As I painted the strokes, I started with the wet on dry technique where the paper is dry and the brush is wet. And I finished with the wet on wet technique when the brush meets the pad where I applied the water. This is when the magic happens, when the color reacts with the water and spreads out. I also went into the wet part of the paper when I was painting the branches just to make it a little bit more saturated. If it wasn't enough, I added more color just to the bottom part. And I repeated this on each of the trees. I had to reapply the clean water a few times, but I'm not using expensive watercolor cardstock. This cardstock cost me 3 euro. Of course, you can get an expensive watercolor cardstock if you want, but in my case, I'm a beginner. My painting skills are not at a level where buying an expensive cardstock would be an investment. It would be more like a waste of money because I would not want to waste it. I watch few watercolor artists and some of them are all about 100% cotton watercolor cardstock, which I find irritating. Expensive supplies are really not what beginners need. Practice is what we need with whatever supplies we can afford. And I like the results on my 3 euro cardstock. And if you like it too, there is a proof that you do not have to have expensive supplies. Anyways. I finished the painting. As you can see, I was switching between the shades of the color and I painted the trees in different heights so it's not one straight line. And once I was done, I let it air dry. The next piece I will show you is my preferred way of painting the trees. I prefer the trees to be more full and bushy and I also don't like painting the trunk because I'm not really good at painting straight lines. First, let me show you an example here. I started with a short line for the top of the tree and then I went from side to side, zigzag painting the short strokes. You can paint the line for the trunk here as well if you want, but for me, it's easier without it. 
Now let's paint the line of the trees. I picked for this one shades of purples and pinks and I started by adding few drops of clean water into each pan just to activate the colors. I did this with the blues as well. I like to use the colors directly from the pan but you can also use a separate palette especially if you want the colors to be less saturated. Next I did the same as I did on the blue piece. I first added clean water at the bottom of the panel and then I started painting the trees. I added the clean water at the bottom of the panel simply because I'm making a card and I wanted to add a Merry Christmas sentiment which will be on the top. If you are not making a card or you are not going to write a sentiment, sentiments are really an optional thing. Then make sure you add the clean water a little bit higher, maybe just below the center of the paper, but this depends on how big your trees will be. Actually, what I found the most difficult or maybe not most difficult, but tricky is where to place the line with the clean water. Because I needed to visualize where the trees are, how big they are and where I will put the sentiment. Also, I'm using usually cardstock that is in the size A6. This cardstock was a little bit bigger, which I forgot and I painted too many trees. I didn't have to cut off any of them, but it's going to be from border to border. You will see it in the finished card. I just prefer when there is a little bit of white space at the borders. Again, like on the first card, I varied the colors and the height of the trees. And when I was done, I let it dry. I cut the painted pieces to A6 panels and here you can see it just fits. The trees are painted from border to border, but it still looks good. As I said, I will be adding a Merry Christmas sentiment here. First, I wrote it with a pencil on a scratch piece of paper just to have it as a guide and to make sure it's centered, but it still took me a few tries. I wrote the sentiment with a pencil directly on top of the cardstock and then I took a black fine liner and I wrote over the pencil lines. I also did a fake calligraphy thing where you thicken the lines. I have a pen where you can do that as you write, but I cannot do calligraphy. This is just my own handwriting. I let the ink dry first just to prevent any smudges and then I erase the pencil lines. For the piece with the blue trees, I stamped the sentiment. I used a black ink and for the stamping, I'm using a stamping tool because the cardstock has a little bit of texture and I had to restamp. If you want to use stamps on watercolor cardstock and don't have such tool, then it's better to use smoother cardstock. The Canson XL is quite smooth. Or instead of getting cold press watercolor cardstock, get hot press watercolor cardstock, which is much smoother. Last step is to adhere the panels on top of a card base. I make my own card bases, but you can also get them already pre-cut with envelopes. I added double-sided tape on the back of the panels and I attached it on top of the card base. Actually, I cut the panels slightly smaller than A6. This way I find it easier to attach it onto the card base. So the cards are finished. Let me give you a closer look. I like both types of the trees, although for the blue trees I need a little bit more practice. I had so much fun painting this and I must say this painting is so addictive. I could paint these over and over, try different color combination. There are so many options. And of course, I made few other cards, so let me show you a few examples. Here I used reds, oranges and browns, quite autumnal. And this one is a birthday card. This color combination is probably one of my favorites because I just love autumn. For the next example, I used the golden watercolors. And I think especially this one looks quite Christmassy. Then I used different shades of blues, which looks very wintry. 
and also I tried these long cuts. These ones are quite a trend in the card making world right now, so I wanted to give it a try. It's a little bit more work as you will need to paint quite a lot of trees, but I think it's a good option especially for this type of a painting. Also here I stamped the sentiment below, not sure which one is better. And the card bases I bought already pre-made together with the envelopes, I think it's from Paper Mania. So these are all the cards I have for you today, I hope you will try it yourself, it's super easy. If you like this video I would really appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already, so you don't miss any of my future videos. You can follow me on Instagram and Pinterest and hop over to my blog to see photos of the cards. If you would like to have more inspiration for cards where you don't need any stamps or dies, on the screen should be showing two videos, one for cards I made last week and the other for cards from previous series. If you don't see them, I will include links to these videos in the description. Thank you all so much for watching, happy crafting and I will see you in my next video.